Hello, and welcome back to Literally Literary. If this is your first time joining us, be sure to check out our previous episodes. This episode, we are continuing our discussion on the poetry collection Guillotine by Eduardo C. Coral for National Poetry Month. Today, we will be discussing the first half of the collection, looking at the pieces more in depth. You know, welcome back, everyone. Um, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think we all are, you know, it's, it's, uh, for us, we just finished, uh, the spring semester. So, um, it's always a, a sigh of relief, uh, to make it through one more semester. Uh, but you know, we want to, um, get through, uh, the, f- the first half of guillotine. And I don't know if, if y'all had a chance to check out the, our first, uh, take on it. Uh, but if you haven't, uh, just like Vanessa said in the intro, you know, check that in, um, check it out, so you can kind of have a, a good bird, bird's eye view of um, of Eduardo's work. Um, and uh, you know, also if you're kind of just tuning in, you know, I know we've had some listeners from um, um, places like uh, Finland and, and and other places in Europe. Um, you know, check out some of our previous seasons. I think uh, you'll like some of the interviews we've had with some of the writers, like Jose Olivares. Uh, and we're going to release a <laughs> special yeah. episode on that. So keep an eye out. That's going to be a little bonus for you all. And we're always happy to remain uh, free uh, because I, I've been listening or I've heard that some of the some podcasts are, are starting to charge subscribers nice. for like, you know, like the premium content and uh, things like <laughs> that. But I think it's good, you know, that we remain free um, and also uh, sponsor free. Uh, so we were not going to do that. <laughs> so, so they don't uh, change our <laughs> sponsor free. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. Except, you know, uh, Border Except Sense. for our sponsors. Right. <laughs> like Border Sense. <laughs> That's right. right. And cue the sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by. <laughs> right. Well. Um, <clears throat> Brought to you by Haterade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, I know. Uh, well, let, let's get to it then. Um, <clears throat> so today uh, we want. Let's start with um, the first poem, uh, or unless you all wanted to start with something else. Um, there's a um, an epigraph right for the whole collection. Se juntan aguas en el cuerpo, and uh, it's uh, Miriam Moscona. Uh, and it's pulled by, uh, just like we talked about the last episode, you know, there's a lot, there's a, the notes that we would encourage you all to read. Uh, it's from Negro Marfil, Ivory Black, a both book length sequence translated by Jen Hoffer. Um, speaking of water and bodies, this is a lot, this is a poem, a, a lot of, a lot of it is the, the poems uh, collection. A lot of the poems in it are about embodiment and about our relationship to the the land, right? Water and dirt. Mm. Um, So I like that epigraph. Um, Ceremonial is the first poem, and it's kind of unique, right? We're talking about Mm -hmm. pre-show. What makes it unique? Um, Well, it's not only the first poem, but it's also separated by the double daggers on its own Mm -hmm. it's a little bit more isolated from the rest of the poems yeah and you have to wonder right the the decision by eduardo to isolate it that way um and you know just going off the title right um but i remember vanessa you talked about this one last time too it was an example of kind of the the taste of of eduardo's work right Mm -hmm. um I mean, in this one, there's a lot going on. You kind of get a sense of who the narrator is, Mm -hmm. like what they've been through. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a lot of religion. There's, um, I guess, rape. Um, There's also identity um, and, I guess, sexuality as well Mm -hmm. comes Mm -hmm. into play. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's a lot, right? That already (laughs) is is a lot to take. And Go ahead. Oh yeah, you were gonna. Sound. I was clearing my throat. Uh, dang it! <laughs> you, You're like remember my students when I like call on them and they're like, DJ, "Oh, I was just let me stretching. clear my throat." <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Uh, 
you know, it's it's a good Vanessa nailed it there, and um, I think from the very first images you get you get the confluence of sexuality kind of entangled in in spiritual religion, mm. and uh, just this fact of uh, you know when you think of what is ceremony, what is something that is practiced, and so from this title you get this first image of someone who is touch starved. Uh, so much so that they're kind of playing with a mole on their skin um, and holding it like a prayer bead, a rosary. Um, and that's, you know, I think a, an image to set up like the rest of of this, thinking about, uh, again, the body uh, mm. we'll keep coming back to. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, you know, you have the this aspect of, um, that, yeah, I, I, you pick up on this, this uh, interaction that seems... To some degree, uh, he would not allow me to swallow is a kind of like a loaded phrase, right? Mm-hmm. Um, referring to a, a flake of sugar as his thumbnail, thumb and mouth. So it's kind of, there's a, there's kind of a bit of a, it seems like forceful, mm-hmm. you know, f- uh, sexual violence almost. It feels like, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so as a ceremonial kind of opening, it, you know, brings a lot in. And of course, I think we mentioned the whole imagery of of crawling into a closet in a wedding dress this the previous episode mm-hmm. i don't know what you made of that Jorge. yeah that's actually my strong line richie um <clears throat> the, the end of it um <clears throat> i walk into a, a closet crawl into a wedding dress oh lord here i am um <clears throat> you know i think f- i part of the reason why i marked it was because it reminded me a lot of um of a Benjamin's collection. So, you know, we had just finished that. So uh, actually when I was reading it, I think we were, we were still discussing that work, you know, so it was on my mind. Um, And um, I, I like how, how it ends, you know, um, going back to what you said, Vanessa, about the religiosity of the speaker. um, Mm. You know, I like how you, how you kind of gave us the, the, you know the four one one there, Richie. Right of um, there's the, the 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 starvation right, which we're gonna get to in in the next series of, of po- poem poems, if you can call them that, um, the testaments, I should say, and um, mm-hmm. you know it, it, it has that cinema cinematic quality because it turns the the mole into a bead and the bead turns into the rosary, and the mm-hmm. rosary is black, you know, which, which I think is of course there's a purpose behind that, you know, um, there's a lot later on of like Santa Muerte and, you know, the, the, the pa- pa- patron scene of like last, co- of, um, you know, people who are LGBT, mm-hmm. um, uh, and, and drug issues, drug problems, that sort of thing, mm-hmm. uh, drug traffickers or maybe not, not drug traffickers, but like people who are like in cartels, you know, worship that as it, we see it like in Breaking Bad, for wow. example. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot already, and it's just, just the first poem. Yeah, I mean, even with that that last phrase, "Here I am," is just like this is my <laughs> intro piece. Like this is <laughs> here I am. You know, aquí estoy. This is this is my work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of short, brief, but it hits that impact. Yeah, um, and just the other thing about this first one is, um, you know, the the title being the the title piece. Um, I'm reminded a lot of like, you know, we've talked about rituals with uh, um, Benjamin Alire Science's collection. And, you know, um, here you could say that, of course, border crossing is a ritual. Prayer is, of course, a ritual, right? A- anything could potentially be construed as a ritual if it has some kind of symbolic significance to it. Um, and so I think like you said right it, it it does have that quality of like um opening the stage right you know this is um uh, the curtains are, are drawn yeah. yeah right and we talked about in this this intro introduction episode past episode the kind of use of the double dagger mm. to kind of create different types of segments you know and we 
pre-show we kind of had that debate like what would we call these you know sections poems like even in in the next one we're going to talk about it's it's long you know and so talking about it like well how do we <laughs> break it down well just page numbers but it's it's a lot but i think that's also a, a, an act of disruption by mm. changing the way we're reading this mm. <laughs> Which reminds me, I don't know if I should mention this now, but you all were saying about the um, pre-show about the 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 video, right? The, the video narration. Oh yeah, right, yeah. Right. Did y'all want to talk about that now that we're on the how the presentation of the work? Oh well, I mean, so just kind of what we were waiting for you to get here. We were watching uh, some YouTube videos, and I I put on. A reading it's i don't even think it's in this first section that we're talking about right it's, it's in, in the, the second time. half of the mm-hmm. book but mm-hmm. i think sure, sure well it, it's cool to mention but uh ours poetica and that's uh you know when we we say ours poetica people think of ars mm-hmm. as ours and of course that's a a poem about poetry right and, and if and almost everyone's probably had to write one as an assignment if you're in <laughs> creative writing or but uh, in this case ours poetica is with o-u-r-s playful i like it uh but they do they do a really nice series and they've featured a lot of people that we've already talked about on mm-hmm. this show uh and so for for coral they had him uh read his read what from this book mm-hmm. uh and it's uh border agent wait border patrol, border, border border patrol agent, agent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's border patrol agent uh it's shot very well so if you guys are listening right now definitely go check it out on, on youtube um, I really liked it because it showcases, of course, we talked about the the book itself, right? The the cover image. Um, it's Coral himself, kind of his hand sliding up. You get a, a kind of like a overhead shot mm-hmm. of him opening the book and it zooms in on the poem and he reads it himself. And and as always, I think we always mention it, but listen, if you have a chance to hear the the creator of the work, share like read their own work, do it. Mm. You know, it's absolutely a, a treat. Um, and so, yeah, and it's that poem is, I mean, all, all the whole, the whole book is very mm-hmm. heavy, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, it's, it's very, it hits a different way also getting to hear him mm. read it out loud. I don't know what you thought. Vanessa. Yeah. I really like the video itself. Um, the poem is very dense, like you said. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. He has a really nice voice. I think the mm-hmm. way that he presents the character because it is he he also introduces the poem and he kind of talks a little bit about it Mm. so it is obviously told from the perspective of the border patrol agent Mm -hmm. and kind of what he sees Mm. on a daily basis Mm. it's really interesting to see that in comparison to especially the testaments that Mm -hmm. we're about to go into Mm -hmm. yeah definitely check that out everyone um yeah and so you know going into the the testaments right so Right after that ceremony, we get testament scratched into a water station barrel. And we talked about this one last time, if you all recall, as the um, ekphrastic, is it, Richie, the pronunciation? Yes. Yeah. Um, And uh, so uh, page 11 is the first one. Uh, And um, I I had uh, some strong lines from this one. Um, and to me, this one, you know, runs two pages, right? So it's 11 and 12. Um, you know, it starts off with, um, a, the, um, I forget what, what do you call it? But, uh, you know, Abba, dying is boring. Um, forget what, what do you call it when like you have that kind of, is it the declarative sentence or something like that? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> um, but, um. You know, as the first poem, as the first testament, I should say, I like how um, it, you know, it reminded me a little bit of um, of something that Jose Olivares might do in his work, mm-hmm. where he kind of mixes mm-hmm. in a little bit of like the pop culture, mm-hmm. a little bit of the Spanish, a little bit of the tongue in cheek that maybe you, you would get also with like Benjamin's collection. Um, but the content, unlike Jose's, work which isn't as dark is in this one Mm. um i stuff english into my mouth spit out chingaderas uh have it your way home of the whopper right so in those four lines right there in the in 
I think this is all one stanza, right? But in the like first in the first part of it, um, you know, the, we get at the mouth again, right? And I think the mouth is a recurring image throughout the collection, just like we saw in the first poem. Mm. Uh, and I like how it goes from, you know, um, th there's that um, code switching, but it's kind of interesting because it's the speaker is saying that they're saying bad words in English, but the word itself is represented in Spanish, you know, and um, and again, this is all inspired by the the barrels that part of that art piece. And then, of course, we get the slogan from Burger King. Uh, so hence the switch, you know, to home of the Whopper, right? And um, um, the 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 stuffing, you know, in and of itself is another image that is, um, you know, it, it's another kind of loaded image as well. You know, um, there's the the starvation, right? That these uh, immigrants are facing. And the only thing that they can stuff themselves with is not the Whopper, but, you know, just the language, you know. And it reminds me a lot of, um, I remember the, the the poem now, it's called La Migra. I re couldn't remember it last time mm -hmm. by Pat Mora that I re oh, recommend yeah. to y'all, um, where it does go into, like, the perspective of both the immigrant and the Border Patrol agent, or La Migra, as it's called. Mm -hmm. They're called. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's just my take on, on, on that, those strong lines there for me. <clears throat> right. Right. And do you also reference the, the patron scene of smugglers, mm. right? Pickpockets. And, um, so you get that reference there as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess just the, you know, what we're, what we're getting here is, is the, we embark on this journey of many voices of, of mm. migrants and, a little bit of i think it's interesting these these snapshots or glimpses of what they're going through in this in this situation of the desert and crossing working with coyotes and smugglers and um uh, we get all sorts of instances of the kind of violence they encounter and um, so in this very first one i just you know this this person speaking to their father I think is uh, there's this tragedy where he's writing their name on on he says he's writing his name and I think some of the imagery strikes really hard especially when when he says you know talking about confronting an animal and he's hurling his memories at it uh, that's on page twelve <clears throat> uh, an animal's prowling this station it shimmies with hunger it shimmers with thirst um, what what a sparkly way of describing these things hunger and thirst right mm -hmm. shimmies and shimmers. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but this idea of hurling memories to keep it away, I think is interesting. And, and, the way, and then like what happens to them? Your laughter is now snagged on its fangs. Your pain now breathes inside its lungs. Taste the feeling. Siempre Coca-Cola, right? There's back to the mm -hmm. U.S. Uh, America's real choice. And when I, whenever I think of, of Coca-Cola, I mean, I think... Uh, a lot has come to light on their, their practices, you know, in, in Latin America, um, in terms of, you know, of having activist. Okay. So like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with this a whole lot. Just like the, the neo-colonial. So uh, they've set up in, in, you know, Latin America, their factories. And uh -huh. so obviously there's, there's been a lot of, uh, uh, movements to fight it. And so one of the things that I, I keep hearing and re and seeing about is like, how they've kind of been linked to to the murder of some of the leaders of, of oh, trying yeah. to start yeah uh so coca-cola linked to capitalism here i think mm -hmm. says you know a lot and of course this 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 little section here on page 12 kind of ends with just the image of of it's it's really his corpse mm -hmm. in the desert right but the way it's described um you find my body lips blue skin thick with scabs and it's now it's just you you it's a very different kind of conversation that we're reading. Like he's mm. passed. Mm -hmm. Um, kneel in the shade, peel off the scabs, touch our last name, Solis. Because it it's forcing you to imagine he because he's mentioning he's writing it mm -hmm. in the skin. Mm -hmm. So what's what is the desert heat and due to the body 
and death. It's it just very, very visceral right off the bat with this, this one little kind of, <clears throat> what would you call it? Like a one scratch, one scratch, one notch. Mm-hmm. Cause the idea I think here is right. Is, is scratches on a barrel or the, are the deaths mm-hmm. that are encountered here? Yeah. Yeah. That's very well said, Richie. Um, I, I wasn't aware of what you said about Coke, but not surprised, you know, um, mm-hmm. Vanessa, w- were there lines that jumped out at you from this one or, oh. um, yeah, well, on page 11, mm-hmm. um, where it says, um, Aguas, the mirror betrayed us. It erased your face from my face. Mm. Um, to me, I kind of just took that as, like, once you get, once they cross the border, mm-hmm. they kind of have to change who they are and to kind of become more Americanized mm. in order to fit in and not... I guess have anyone I guess suspect have them of anything, right? Um, right. Kind of like just assimilating and like, kind of losing your own culture to fit in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there is that uh, erasure that you know what you mentioned right about the assimilation becomes more true when we get you know the the whopper right and the coke, mm-hmm. you know all these like you said right, Richie the um, American staple american you know products right Mm -hmm. and of course it's a bit more complicated by what richie said about how Mm -hmm. a lot of these products you know for instance coke you know that the um, what's interesting about coke as well is um you know many of you already know this of course but the here it's corn syrup Mm -hmm. and in mexico it's actual cane sugar Mm -hmm. um so you know even even the the product is different depending on on where you're from even though it's got the same bottle name on the bottle right um and um i think the other thing is um you know someone made a really good point on twitter that you know they say that we read these stories to humanize you know, the, the victims or humanized immigrants or humanized, you know, people who are minoritized. But someone made a good point that, you know, um, a lot of times it actually humanizes us as readers because we, 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 our perspective is enlightened, Mm -hmm. you know, and we get to learn more about, you know, this is, this is the way it's like for them. Um, and I think we come to appreciate our privilege, you know, that, that we face by just being able to see it on the page. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's quite a powerful point, um, testament to start with. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the 15. Um, I don't know about you all. I had uh, on 13. I thought it was mm-hmm. a really some interesting lines that he, he says – um, or rights, mm. um, kind of past the middle where it says walked toward a mountain. And I, you get it because you get the title of the, the book here, kind mm-hmm. of it's making an appearance. Uh, and I, I thought it's an interesting way of, of representing it. Uh, so again, we're thinking of kind of this desert land mountains, um, walk toward a mountain coolness fell through the heat guillotine. I think it's such an interesting way of describing that. Um, and then I also thought of rested, fought off the oldest smuggler, which I'm thinking might be reference to death. Mm. Like, you know, uh, it makes me think of night a little bit for some reason. Mm. Ellie Weasel. Like mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. moments when uh, the prisoners are being marched from one camp to another through the snow. And, and so for them during their rest, it's more of like trying to, fight off death because um you know they were marched at gunpoint miles through the snow and if you slowed down or stopped i believe you were shot or just trampled um and and then when they were put to rest it was it was just too cold and so the desert conditions are are also really rough you know at nighttime and so that's just in these little very very sparse language of coolness fell through the heat guillotine rested fought off the oldest smuggler Mm -hmm. when I think of death smuggling people from life into another realm Mm. I I, that kind of struck me Mm -hmm. so I had to call call that out call that out that's kind of a word to say it (laughs) point it out yeah yeah I mean it's it's a testament that is um has this kind of um 
you know, every, every line ends, you know, it doesn't have, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> the enjambment? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, you know, that, you, and so you can kind of isolate them that way, right? And also mm. the, the rhythm is interesting too because a lot of these are like one or two words, you know, kind of like the ones you pointed out. Um, so, the, mm. yeah, that, that's another interesting feature of this one. Which, uh, when when you do that, it's it's frenzied. It's shortness of breath. It's mm. it causes a sort of panic in in that shortness. Yeah. Wow. What do you what do you make of fifteen, Vanessa? I wanted to ask about the 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 this style here of on page. It's very different than anything we've ever talked about. I think and. It just has a lot of different voices. So this is the testaments scratched into the water barrel. So I just imagine different people arriving to the water barrel and carving in little thoughts. Um, but you also have like the opposing voice. Mm -hmm. So you get, so obviously you see the people that are like, I think we talked about this in the first episode, the people who come and like destroy the water mm -hmm. for the migrants. Um, mm -hmm. So they're also arriving and they're also carving their own little messages to mm -hmm. the migrants. No. So definitely a lot of different yeah, voices in lot, here, right? Yeah. And the typeset too is um is different to represent kind of the different voices as well. You know, some of these are a little more faded, some of these are bold. Uh mm -hmm. and a couple of the last ones. A couple, so most of the words are bolded, but like God and do are not. Um, and like you said, Vanessa, that because it's some of the opposing voices, some of the messages kind of get scrambled, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the, the beginning wall, Rio de Aguas Vivas, Rio de Aguas Vivas is kind of part of the one that follows it, which is written in regular typeface other than the bold, is the soul of witness. Um, so I like how in this one, the, the you know, so, so some, of the, some of those voices kind of representing the, you know, it, it's all coming from the same place, you know, the, 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 the desert, you know, the, the the place where people from both sides are you know one side of course is just trying to find a better living and then the other side is um you know slandering right or like you could almost say it's it's almost a form of sacrilege right hence the idea of testaments hmm. yeah i mean you have like build a wall in here a couple of times you definitely yeah the reference to trump uh, which I think is interesting the way this little section through Trump mm -hmm. or, but then you also like Trump God is God. Cause like, I mean, you, when he, he has mm -hmm. his cult mm -hmm. where people view him as, as this kind of figure. And so if that's him, it's, is God touching me? You think of what Trump's infamous words of like, you know, mm. I don't have to say it, you know, mm -hmm. but you guys know, uh, they're right. Uh, uh, make Arizona great. Right, the, some of that language, mm -hmm. build the, stop the drugs. Uh, hey, illegals, ICE. Of course, we know that the I word we don't want to use when referring to migrants. Um, so, the, I, I thought it's interesting the use of of, of all this to kind of mash into mm -hmm. one one page here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It reminded me a little bit of um, if you are familiar with uh, Molotov's, um, you know, the, the frijolero, mm -hmm. yeah. and the music video in particular. Um, has that kind of um, call and response, if you want to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I guess also um, there's a little bit of, of pop cu culture here too, right? The bitty bitty boom boom. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I'd be remiss if if I didn't mention, you know, um, the the impact Selena had for a lot of Latinx people mm -hmm. uh, here in the border, in particular. You know, so she's kind of this symbolic figure who has a lasting legacy all the more so because you know she so was tragically murdered i didn't expect to talk about that one as much <laughs> no. honestly but yeah yeah my next one was till 18 what about y'all 
17. So on 16, I just, uh, one of the lines I, I highlighted, uh, I just thought, again, it's, I just love the imagery. It's the very last two lines there. Mm-hmm. This is a harmonica tattooed on my collarbone. I can feel death's mouth on it, lips wiry and hot. I just, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I um, underlined that one too. I see you did too, Vanessa. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. It's like you lied. You guys lied when you didn't have that. <laughs> like, all right. There's but, probably a lot that all sorts of lines that we yeah, probably I, can say, huh? You got to be selective. True. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had 17, Vanessa? Yes. Um, okay. So the first two lines, La bestia me está siguiendo. Um, so that could mean a lot of things here, I think. Um, um, I mean, later they talk about, yeah, he talks about diablos. Um, so it could obviously, la bestia could be the devil. Mm. Um, but la bestia is also the train that a lot of migrants find themselves on in order to make their way to mm-hmm. the border. Um, and a lot of them actually die from falling off because um, they fall asleep because they're too tired. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not eating a lot. They're dehydrated. And the train goes fast, like, and they're they're sitting on top of it. So they're not in the train. Mm-hmm. So they're on top of it. Um, so I think that was something that I really wanted to talk about. And then towards the bottom of that stanza, um, it says... Yo no, yo no, Mexico es lindo, pero sufrí tanto. Um, that really stood out to me because it's talking about how Mexico is beautiful and there's a lot of great things and there's a, there's a great culture there. Um, but there is a lot of, I guess, corruption and there's the, the drug trafficking. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why a lot of migrants find themselves trying to come to America. Mm-hmm. They're trying to escape that. Um, so it's talking about how even though there is all of these great things in Mexico, there's they're still suffering and they're trying to make better lives for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, very well said. Um, and, uh, you know, the line that you pointed out, you know, reminds me of, um, it's it's also seems to be the um, part of that phrase that we say, uh, Mexico es lindo y querido. You know, and mm-hmm. so it's interesting that the esquerido is snipped out, and uh, instead, like you said, right, we get about the suffering from the perspective of the speaker. Mm-hmm. My line actually was right above yours, uh, there. Um, about you know, you talked about la bestia as, as the train, and uh, here the train is um, la muerte es un tren, las estrellas son pasajeros, yo no, yo no. And so if taken together with that, another way we could read that is by thinking about they're not a passenger, right? And it kind mm-hmm. of alludes to like uh, you saying, you know, they're not really in the train, right? Proper. Mm-hmm. They're basically hitchhiking on the train. And, um, you know, the, the we talked about death, you know, with Santa Muerte, the Black Rosary. Here, the train, right, is death itself, right? Because you'd like you said, a lot of them don't make it. And, um, you know, not just from the conditions of the land and the train itself, you know, like falling off, right? But a lot of times they're assaulted, you know, not just mm-hmm. by like bandits, but like by by the Mexican government. You know, let's, let's mm-hmm. I think it's very important to acknowledge that the Mexican government does perpetrate a lot of the violence against migrants from Central America because there's a lot of colorism, mm-hmm. you know, and there's a mm-hmm. lot of kind of um, jingoism, right? Just like there is in the U.S., um yeah yeah right on 18 right you even have the reference right what does his mother the, the mother say mm-hmm. outside of waka in my clinic my mother said i hate your indian face mm-hmm. that was yeah and that was the line i, I was just going to point out but yeah go ahead <laughs> no no go ahead go ahead that's a, the send off no hand uh, off <laughs> well just yeah um like you said you know and, and vanessa kind of teed it up for us really well here so um you know, Oaxaca is is an important place in Mexico because of, of the indigenous community there. And, you know, it's also um, kind of a big tourist attraction um, because there's a lot of merchants there and vendors. I was mm-hmm. fortunate to go there, you know, for a, it was like a film festival. 
Um, but you can't help but feel that, you know, there's, there is a lot of suffering there, right, that you speak of. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just completely impoverished in a lot of places. And there's other places you go to, like a, a corner of a, of a street, and it's like really upscale all of a sudden. You know, so, so mm -hmm. it's like really stark contrast and like beggars in the street. And then, you know, like this store that sells like their artwork for like 2000 bucks, you know, and the, the indigenous community isn't even poverty enough. This, right. It's like some other mm -hmm. people, right. That came from outside and just ended up colonizing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just going to point that out about, you know, the, the mentioning here in Oaxaca and the, the, the that kind of anti-indigeneity, right, with their identity and with um, a lot of what we see is still in Mexico to this day. And, and of course, in the, in the whole scheme of things, right, it's about the, the features, right? And it reminds me, you know, what you said about the erasing the face, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, the mother's nose being more narrow or what have you that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then in the same piece, he talks about the sun, <clears throat> Right. Uh, mm. If where yeah. was it? Shoot. Towards the bottom. Yeah. At last month, my as my son blew out. Mm. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. My son blew out the candles on, on his cake. I noticed for the first time the hideous shape of his nose. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. <that's... laughs> and the way it ends, you know, um, it really takes that dark turn that. You know, some of his other testaments take, mm -hmm. you know, um, if my mother could see me now, my feet bloody, my face darker than ever. Um, and it kind of goes on, you know, um, I never let go of my right breast and earn heavy with my own ashes and earn I'm lugging God mm. knows where. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, I don't know. Did you guys have? I had a uh, twenty-three actually. Mm, okay. Twenty-one. Okay. I mean, I just want to say twenty is pretty shocking, right? Yeah. And then again, you realize that it's a, a myriad of voices that you're hearing, right? Because mm. it's yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty ugly. Mm. That's, that's it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and this is part of what makes this collection definitely it can be hard to get through, right? Especially all these testaments. I think I had mentioned it to y'all when I first started reading it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was mm -hmm. hard for y'all. I mean, I'm sure it was, yeah. but like to the degree. Mm -hmm. um, right. And uh, so, I mean, the reference, so like we talk about like, I always, I always think of the Minutemen and these, these militia, these, these uh, guys who are very, you know. White supremacists. Yeah. yeah. We just say it. You know, I don't know why I'm beating around it, but like white supremacists, like they're, you know, and so you see this voice here, like. Uh, reference you know if you see a mexican walking down the road and hit him just right you can grease your truck it's mm -hmm. the kind of thing you might hear them joking around with one another mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah you said you had 21 for this yeah it's just um, a couple of lines towards the middle of the page um it says in mexico bodies disappear bodies in the sonoran desert are everywhere um yeah um I think we, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit in previous episodes with like Ben Sine's work. Um, the idea that, um, I mean, there's the femicides in Mexico, mm -hmm. um, a lot of missing people. And, but in the Sonoran Desert, people are just dying as they're trying to migrate. And so they're the bodies, you see them everywhere. Yeah. And just, just the contrast. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. Um, and, uh, you know, it also kind of connects to the to the previous one mm -hmm. that Richard just read, mm -hmm. you know, because later on, um, you know, it talks, it says here, another went back, veering too close to highways, too close to ranchos. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so so it goes into the the myriads of ways that the, the the bodies of these migrants end up, you know, just mm. um, victimized, right? And whether it's by, like you said, Miniman, right, or other like these racist vigilantes, 
or the desert itself, right? Because, you know, it, it's so brutal. Mm -hmm. And um, um, it also goes into the, um, the way that the, the desert and in, in, in the border in general, right, is interlinked, you know, with like, you know, we, we get here right in the border. We have the border highway, right, which literally runs right over the, the border wall, um, which is quite a sight to see. And uh, we also get a lot of, you know, especially the, in the Rio Grande Valley in Texas, a lot of places where, you know, there's ranchers, right, who have their land that runs across the border. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when they're building the wall, there's actually like eminent domain to get the that land from them. And so actually a lot of Texas ranchers are fighting that. But at the same time, you know, that the, there's always those, you know, claims that like there's too many of those you know, migrants, right, that trespassing or whatever. Uh, and that's where you get a lot of that xenophobia as well. Uh, 23? Or mm -hmm. Richie, did you have? No? Um, so the reason I, I had chosen uh, 23 was, um, again, it's it's another one where the, the words, certain words are um, interlaced and overlap with each other. Uh, and um, kind of, what's forget what the word is, but um, you know the the words that's re that are interlaced are um, sombras, señora, um, so shadows and um, ma'am, basically, uh, and so a lot of this is about you know the the so called señora de las sombras, um, which I thought was interesting, and I hadn't heard of that you know, the, the referred to as that way, you know, I kind of see it as, um, you know, that there's poems that I think we might've covered, but I can't say for sure or somewhere where, you know, it's like, you know, to like the La Virgen de Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And, um, so here it seems, um, to kind of do that, but it's interesting that she's referred to as the shadows. And of course it could just be like death, right? Personified as, as a, as a older woman <laughs> and so senora. Um, but, um, it, you know, it re it's, it's, a, it's, there's an anaphora there, right? Because it repeats that senora in every single line and the way that the poem is structured, some of the lines begin at, at the, on the left and then some of the lines begin on the right. Uh, and I was thinking more about this one in terms of how, you know, the, the ones on the, um, on the, on the left mirror, the ones on the right. So for instance, in the middle, undress your, my hunger, Señora de las Sombras, um, uh, Señora de las Sombras, undress my thirst, you know? And so all of these calls, you know, it's, it's, it is kind of like a prayer, of course, um, but yeah, uh, that's what I liked about this mm. one. Yeah, it definitely has that prayer mm. aspect. Mm -hmm. And again, I wonder because of the typeset, where clearly some of the words are in that font that we saw, where with the words you know scratched into the barrels. If you know there was that same thing with the barrels here with Señora and Sombras, um, and Sombras it takes on another significance, of course, right? Because you know, those of those us three living in the desert, what's one thing that you look for when you're in the desert? Shade. Yeah. You know, and, and so there is that significance beyond that too, mm -hmm. you know, of survival. My next one wasn't until 27. What about y'all? I don't have any before then. No, go ahead. So 27 is a dual column poem. Um I think we, we've we've seen these this kind of poem before. I can't remember where it might have been Benjamin's work uh, collection, um, and so this is you know because it's so column you can kind of read it through right. So the first line being the, there's a sermon twice a week, but you could you know these kinds of uh, this kind of form you could also read it um, vertically instead of horizontally. Um, so I thought. That was interesting, and I don't know if you guys read it that way too, like mm -hmm. two ways. Um, I just had the the bottom of uh, 27, um, where it says, 
um, turtle shell, the, the Mayan symbol for zero. And then on the opposite side, it says we're tired, but our cell phones are charged. Uh, so just the, um, the contrast there in those lines, you know, because it talks about El Salvador, you know, which is in, in Central America, right? And there's a lot of migrants from there. Um, so it goes in a little bit into their culture, uh, the Mayan culture, um, which to this day, a lot of um, a lot of the migrants still speak, you know, that indigenous tongue. And actually one of the things with Las Americas and just with other, you know, immigrant or organizations is trying to find translators for them so that they're represented in court. You know, they, we actually get that actually is possible. Um, but just the idea of the, you know, the cell phones, right? Kind of, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's such a it's such a big symbol for like you know um, modernization, uh, you know, just the advancement of the world, and it's the idea that you know they're the ones that have the the energy, right? And the the bodies do not, you know, and so there's a kind of um, I mean, it's ironic, you know, of course, but, um, but yeah, I had that one. Mm. And, you know, this one, this testament goes in a lot into like um, drinking and water. And, uh, you know, there's the, the references to, um, to um, the, the countries, like I said, not just El Salvador, but Mexico and Costa Rica. Uh, but in the, in the uh, second half, you know, we get the references to sister. Um, and so the, just like we get the references to Abba, right, to the father, here we get the references to the sister. Yeah, I mean, just more violence, violence and death. Yeah. Um, did either of you have 30, 31? I had 30. Um, okay. And uh, so this one starts, you know, before fleeing uh, Toluca, um, which is in Mexico. Um, you know, this one is kind of similar to the first one because it goes into, um, you know, the 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 speaker and there's the sexual encounter that they end up having here. Um, you know, it says, um, "I lost my virginity in a, in the shed," um, and then later on, you know, it says. Um, I spit in my father's face, in my hands, dark blood, blood bark, a small ball of scabs peeled from my flesh, my contraband, my pomegranate. There's a lot of um, wordplay there that reminds, reminding me of, um, you know I, know, I know I keep mentioning it, you know, but Benjamin's work, because of how Benjamin, you know, and you went over this quite well, Richie, that you know, the, 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 the taste of words, right. And how we say them. Mm. And also, um, the, the way that Benjamin's work deals with, uh, sexual sexuality and, uh, embracing sexuality, um, you know, going back to talking about the closet and all that and getting out of it. Mm. Uh, but this one of course is uh, much darker, right? Because we get one of the, um, we get the the scratches right that you were talking about so mm. this is one of the poems that the one of the testaments that has that but it goes into um you know imagining this the migrants journey um you know losing who they are they're or not losing who they are losing the their maturing right by losing their virginity and there's a rejection also of the father as well um yeah, so there's a lot going on in this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clavo. Clavo, clavo. And I think there's just two more after that one that you mentioned about the, the me falta un clavo, mi cruz, right? And mm -hmm. more into the religious uh, symbolism. Did either of you have uh, the Far From Highways or the 35, the last one? I had 35. Yeah. What about it? Um... Towards the end of the poem, it says, I drop my rosary. It scurries away like a scorpion. Um, I thought that was interesting, the way that he 
talks about the rosary scaring away, it to me it kind of just represented his faith and his religion. Mm. And he just kind of like has lost his faith. Mm. And that's why it has it scurries away because he doesn't really believe that God is there and looking out for him because he's suffering so much through mm-hmm. all of these things. Yeah, there's a loss of hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a reference here to the seed of uh, Sinaloa as well at the end. Um, but I, I do like the image. You know, I like that image a lot, you know, mm-hmm. the scorpion. Mm-hmm. I also like the image at the beginning. You know, God is circling like a vulture, mm-hmm. you know, just because we don't normally think of God doing that, right? Yeah. Like you said, right, we think of, of God in which in a lot of religions, I should say, as kind of a, a watch, watching over people, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and he's usually depicted as being like kind and like he loves everybody. Right. But here it's the opposite because he doesn't, the narrator doesn't really feel that anymore. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and, and also when you think of vulture, uh, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're animals that, mm-hmm. that like, prey on like the dead like they kind of circle around sensing death so they can pray pray on it and Mm -hmm. uh you know we talked we did talk about it since since you brought it up Mm. the poem border patrol agent Mm. right where it says god Mm. is always hungry Mm kind of links back Mm. to that line a little bit yeah Mm -hmm. that that is interesting um and uh at at the end you know it's also referred to as uh, el avion de la muerte uh, as the vulture here. And I like mm-hmm. how there's that, you know, Viva Mi Sinaloa, Viva Los Mojados. It's almost like um, last words to me, you know, um, where the speaker is from, uh, one of the Mexican states, like I mentioned. And also, um, you know, Mojado, it's interesting the, the way that the speaker plays with the words here, you know, um, because, of course, mojado, you know, means wet back. In both of those terms, you know, of course, slurs. But here, you know, it's it's that em- embrace of that, which I find very interesting. I don't think I, I've seen, you know, a poem that kind of puts a positive spin on it. And again, it reminds me of what Benjamin did with certain words where, you know, it has that mm-hmm. negative connotation and then it turns it into a positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess this poem also has a lot of... Uh, Tigres del Norte illusions, mm. which I, I don't know enough about, but yeah, I I didn't catch that. Um, well, it's from the, the footnotes, the references. Oh, interesting, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And I'm assuming I think that they're from Sinaloa as well, so that makes sense too. Yeah, the Deja de Llorar Chiquilla sounds like something they would they would sing. Um, <clears throat> Te odio y te quiero, right? So yeah, that's interesting. Lo tomas o lo tiras. Yeah. Um, you know, so th- we started with a poem that had the black rosary, right? And and the speaker was um, holding it as something that they were starved to touch, you know, just a sense of touch. And it ends with a poem where the speaker drops it. Mm-hmm. So we'll hit mm. pause on that. Yeah, man, good. I like that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Literally Literary, brought to you by Border Census and Power at the Pass. This episode, we discussed Guillotine by Eduardo C. Corral. If you haven't read it, we hope we inspire you to pick up a copy. Join us on our next episode as we continue this discussion. Follow us on Instagram at literallyliterary.ep and on Twitter at literallylitep.